The new Design Frontier report um, was headed up by uh, a woman called Leah Bewley. She kind of did an industry-spanning uh, study on the design maturity across multiple industries, multiple countries. What that allows us to do is to cut the data in different ways to understand where the kind of key behaviours are that might level you up to the, the next step in your kind of design maturity journey. We canvassed uh, 2,200 uh, companies, but we also spoke to a lot of design leaders in, I would say, design-led organisations to see what that kind of secret um, kind of makeup looks like to become a kind of more design mature organisation. And then that's all baked into some of the recommendations that I'll be sharing tonight. My role in that is to essentially use that model that we used across the globe to um, deep dive in an individual company um, to understanding their capabilities, not just in a company as a whole, but across different hierarchies, uh, different departments, different skill sets, and understand what people think their maturity are um, uh, or maturity is, and then ultimately kind of give them recommendations to try and level up. So the idea of um, how design is adopted uh, inside a company is one of the key attributes to higher mature organisations. And in terms of technology um, providers and partners, that's really important because they're a key um, partner in adoption of design. So it's almost like a, it's always used as a kind of analogy of a stool where actually it's kind of a three-legged stool of technology design and the kind of business, the product side, uh, and then the, the, the stool ultimately is for the customer to kind of lean on, right? Uh, if one leg is too big or too short, then the stool falls over and it's not a viable or desirable product. We are here to kind of make the customer's lives better uh, using design thinking methodology or uh, working with designers and, and creating good things together. Because one of the key findings of the report is that kind of idea of adopting design broadly across the business, um, the idea of stakeholders being involved uh, frequently and consistently across a project, not at the beginning, not at the end, not kind of haphazardly. Um, so if we are designers and we are just designing in a vacuum, we'll make something um, really nice to look at, but functionally it won't work. Um, conversely, if the technology partners only kind of build things without any kind of desirability or uh, user experience, then you can ship it, but nobody will use it. And so some of the quickest wins are the kind of the conversations that you can have in a corridor and bring people into the design process to democratize it, break the status quo and start to talk to someone that you haven't spoken to before and really understand about what, what is important to them and what do they measure success on and try and bring that in line with how you measure success as a designer. If you can get to that point, then uh, you will become more design led and more design mature because you are all kind of pointing in the same direction. But that's a huge transformation ask um, but I've always thought design is a human problem. It's not a technology problem. It's not a designer's problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a human problem. It's about bringing people together, not just the customer, but the people within the organization too. The key thing that I'll speak to tonight is this idea like transformation is continuous. And if it's digital or if it's whatever that prefix is, agile transformation, the idea is that you, what you're doing to the organization is making it um, able to deal with continuous uncertainty. The fact that we're kind of, we're, lear we're prioritizing learning over delivery as well as delivery maybe. So when we kind of talk about agile transformation or any type of transformation, it's with the understanding that it's a continuous mindset. I would encourage everybody to download the report um, itself. It's, it's freely available on uh, designbetter.co. Uh, one side effect that we didn't see coming was uh, uh, designers actually using the report and the maturity model in, inside on themselves to find out where their behaviours are and how they can level up uh, their skill set. I have to, it's almost biased that I work at Envision, I have to say this, but genuinely if I didn't, I think it's just a, such an interesting insight and, and something that needed to happen. And this is just the first step. I think there's going to be more rounds of research, more rounds of insight to come, because what's really interesting from the initial report is that actually we've developed a ton more hypotheses that we really want to get back out there with our customers and try and find out what those mean to the maturity scale in the industry. So yeah, it's, it's super awesome stuff and it's, it's really awesome to be involved.